This is my fourth time here. During the last four months, I like being here. I like to come here. So this year has been very difficult for us. So what have I learned during this year? Some unpleasant surprises. I've noticed that, that our generation, I mean of people who were born in, this, in the 80s, 70s, not a little bit of 90s, that this year has shown that we're a bit soft, not ready for difficulties, to some challenges, that we're not ready to, to suffer, to make difficult decisions. And we're very easy, you know, get anxious and depressed and panic, because again, because I consult many people and many people come to me this year with anxiety and, and panic attacks, and even myself. And experience something similar. And why is it? Why is it so? Why do we become so sensitive? Why do we, why do we get depressed so easily? And I think it's we like part of the culture, and but we also get influenced by the world culture. Humanism is okay. In the center is the person. Okay, when the person is the the, the the most important thing, that the person's comfort becomes the most important thing in the life of, of any person. And when our comfort is under threat, this becomes a problem. And when our comfort is the main priority for us, we become susceptible to other to become weak. We have Christian humanism. We think that as Christians that our, our Christian comfort is the main thing and God should provide all of that. And then we we'll look all of that, not because of Him, but we we'll look for all those blessings for ourselves. We we'll go to Him to, to, to ask to be healed, that we are, our, that, he, that he solves our problems, that our husband stop drinking. Reminder when I was a pastor, many people kind of in, in, in church used to pray in my church for work, but then when, when they got it, they stopped going to church. So they, people used to come to church when I was a pastor to get something, and once they got it, they disappeared. And that's why when our comfort, our life is the main priority, and that's why we, we, we react so so painfully to any, any problems, any stresses in our lives. I was unpleasantly surprised in May, I had a panic attack, and you may think that, that I got you know, coronavirus or something. You might think that I lost my job or something horrible happened, nothing like that. You know why? Why I got, why I panicked? Okay, my trips were cancelled. I had a schedule, I, had to go. I wanted to go to Uzbekistan, I wanted to go and rest there, have a holiday. Everything kind of got cancelled, so I was anxious, I panicked. So I was very, I'm very sensitive. And it's all because of... It's because me, as a person, my comfort is on the first place. So everything God wants, you know, His plans, they kind of come later, they come after my needs, after my wishes. But He is the God, He is the King. 
and we come. We have problems when we forget about that, when we put our own needs first and we forget about him. I'll read you the words. Do you feel this pain, this kind of disappointment, that these believers were really disappointed? I kind of, you know, I obey all the rules, I don't make sins, I don't sin. I look at other people. They live better lives, they have success, they have money, fame. They don't accept God, but still live happily. And what about us? What's the use of us living, living humbly, serving, serving God? So they were very, very disappointed. Disappointment in their lives, in God, in the situation, and my my own well-being is on the first place. But if they remembered that God is, should, should be on the first place. That is the main priority, that He's still with them, He was with them. There's always like a reason to stay faithful, to be full of, to, full of joy and love, even if something's going wrong in our lives. That's why today, let's think about it. We'll talk about the, uh, the birth of Samuel. Like a judge? Doesn't mean like a judge like nowadays, it has a different meaning in the past. It's like there were leaders, they would lead through which God kind of, you know, helped people. So we will see on the example of the birth of Samuel. We'll put a parallel, you know, with, with the birth of Jesus. We'll see kind of what kind of significance this birth, this, this birth has. But let's talk about the story of his birth first. Both of them were born in a difficult time, both Jesus and Samuel. A difficult historical time. Israel had no king at that time, and God was choosing all these leaders. The thing lasted between two or three hundred years, and how did it end? And it shows kind of at the end of the book that but kind of towards the end things were bad. People kind of were, were leaving God. They kind of you know that people were living in sin. There was sin. They had lots of sins. Yeah, it came to this point like even the sons they were kind of raped a guest. Kind of everything went so bad towards that they lost all the values, lost the connection with God. And even an example of a priest who was doing something wrong as well. And even, but it keeps saying in the Bible that during those times there was no king. That's why lots of problems were happening. And 
и духовная преемственность, знания Бога и знания Писания просто бы исчезли. Now all this would have disappeared, and the whole nation would have disappeared. And now you see what kind of moment you know, Samuel was born. First Samuel. I don't have the book, so... that one of the wives can't, can't give birth. And they thought kind of that she had some kind of problem. And they thought kind of when, when the child is conceived, it's only kind of God's, you know, up to God, that it's his decision. And then because she can't have kids, that it's kind of, you know, that God, it's kind of God's punishment, that he decided not to give her any kids. There's something wrong with her. But another woman, she had lots of kids. But the, the other wife kind of used the situation to make the, this woman, you know, complain. That she make her kind of, you know, reject God. But Anna, on the, rever on the reverse, she didn't do that. She was, she, on the contrary, she, she used to pray more. She was praying so much. The priest kind of thought that maybe she's drunk because kind of she was totally, you know. And then he said, "God, God heard your 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 prayer. Go home." And when she got pregnant, she she named the child Samuel because she said, "Kind of, you know, I asked for this child. I begged for this child." And every time when they tell in the Bible that a child is miraculously born, the woman cannot give birth for a long time. She tries everything. Sarah tried. It's like every time they, in the Bible they, 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 they explain they give a prehistory of how difficult it was to get a baby and, and then how the baby was born miraculously. What, what's the main message? That, Bo that God comes into our lives, that He acts that to, ch to, change, to change the history of mankind and He sends these people. That's the meaning of the of this very detailed explanation of the births of these children. He's just gonna it's his work, it's his plan. That I bring this person into the world. She's like a messenger, my messenger. That's the meaning of this story. So what did Samuel bring? Okay. So before the, all the Jews were used in different tribes, Samuel, okay, so he, he's the last judge, the last, he's the first, so he united them basically. He opened the school, he had many, many um, students. So first and God blessed the first and second kings. So monarchy became from him, a government became from, began from him, 
царствованию Давида, благодаря царствованию его сына Соломона, достиг пика своего могущества, богатства и предельно расширил свои территории. So thanks to him, you know, the, the, the country reached its prosperity and grew in different areas, science, culture, art. And he was at the beginning of all of that. So because of him, all of that began. He changed the direction, the history of Israel. Because before him, the whole nation kind of reached a dead end. But he came, saved them, and changed the direction. He healed them. He brought grace into this nation. And it's all because of his life and birth. He was a turning point in the history of Israel. So God changed the history of mankind through him, through somewhere. When Anna gave birth, she, she sang a song. It's a very famous song. The song was written like a triumphal song. And in the style of kind of, you know, fighting style that God fights and wins. relates the birth of Samuel with the birth of Jesus because when Maria got pregnant when she met the Elizabeth Elizabeth kind of blessed her Maria also had a song but she was praising the Lord and see what's, what's the similarity between these two songs. This, kind of, this, this theme unites the both stories.
Jesus finishes the 400 years of silence. Okay, remember in, in the um, in the Bible, it was a difficult time because every time there was some kind of prominent person, um, if a prominent person appeared, everyone would come to him and say, like, are you the Messiah, are you the Messiah? So it was a desperate time for everybody. But the difference is that Samuel, his mother, was asking for, for this baby. But Marie didn't, didn't even ask for the child. She wasn't even married. She, she, didn't, she didn't sleep with a, with, a, with a man. She didn't even think about a child. That's the difference between the two stories. But God comes in this moment into her life and tells you, like, y you're going to have a baby. What does it tell us? shows kind of that the birth of Jesus was God's plans only, that the person wasn't involved at all. There is no man in this. Man wasn't involved. And Maria got pregnant because of, because of God and Holy Spirit were there. The man was, didn't take part. This never happened. And therefore we get criticized, like, how, how is it possible? Or we, hold to, we hold on to this truth, why is it important? It's important because Jesus is, is unique. No one has been, you know, conceived this way and nobody will be after that. You're not, you're not, not just a Messiah, not just a king, as a Messiah. And what the word became flesh. That's why his, his birth is unique. What do we connect Christmas with? They bought tangerines at the beginning of the month. It's like what's the spirit of Christmas. So I think Christmas kind of it's a family present, lots of food. We put all the um, socks with presents, the Christmas tree, and everyone's waiting for that, waiting for a fairy tale, for a miracle. We send each other cards, we'll take pictures in front of uh, with the Christmas tree. I always have music. I always hear these Christmas songs. So what do we think about Christmas? It's like a very cozy, cozy place. There's a Mary, a baby. There's Joseph in front of, next to them. Lots of animals looking at them. Everything's covered with soft light. I feel like they show on the postcards, it's winter, it's evening, lots of snow, it's, it's snowing, and in the window we see that there's a light, we look through the window, and it's a happy family inside, there's a Christmas tree, table, music, yeah, silent night. So we think like, oh, it's something soft, something nice, something cute, end of the year. But you know, in, it's a bit different. I want to give you a different side. Yes, of course, there were Mary and Joseph. But on the spiritual level, there was something different. Uh, 
жена, облеченная в солнце, под ногами ее луна, и на голове ее венец из двенадцати звезд. Она имела в очреве и кричала от боли и мук рождения. И другое знамение явилось на небе. Вот большой красный дракон, с семью головами и десятью рогами, и на головах его семь диадим. И хвост его увлек с неба третью часть звезд, и поверх их на землю. И дракон сей стал перед женою, которая набежала родить дабы когда она родит, пожрать ее младенца. И родила она младенца мужеского пола, которому надлежит пасти все народы жертвам железным, и восхищено было дитя и Богу и престолу его. А жена убежала в пустыню, где приготовлено было для нее место от Бога, чтобы питали ее там 1260 дней. И произошла на небе война, и Михаил и ангел его воевали против дракона, и дракон и ангел его воевали против них, но не устояли, и не нашлось уже для них место на небе. И низвержен был великий дракон, древний змей, называемый дьяволом и сатаной, обольщающий всю вселенную. И низвержен на землю, и ангелы его низвержены с ним. И услышал я громкий голос, говорящий на небе. Ныне настало спасение, и сила, и царство Бога нашего, и власть Христа его, потому что низвержен клетник братьев наших, прилетавший на них, и перед Богом нашим день и ночь. И они победили его кровью Агнца, и словом свидетельства своего, и не возлюбили души своей даже до смерти. Итак, веселитесь небеса и обитающие на них, горе живущим на земле и на море, потому что к вам сошел дьявол сильной ярости, зная, что ему не много остается. Друзья, совсем другая. It's not just this silent night, cozy, cozy song. This it shows like you know, the battle between the good and the bad. That when he was born, that everything kind of was you know at war. While he was you know in the manger, all the dark and, and light, darkness and light were fighting. So his his birth was kind of you know similar some kind of fight. Son of God, you know, comes into the history of mankind, so, so he can win. He can fight darkness, so he can win the consequences of sins. So he's here to 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 fight Satan, to change the history of mankind. It's a huge event. It's unique. So the whole history kind of is broken into two parts, before and after. But the main event in history has already happened. That he came and died for us. Paid for all our sins. Third day was was, uh, was raised again. But the battles are still continuing. But the main event has already happened. It's like during the Second World War there was a, a hymn, like you know we're doing the right thing, you know we will win, the enemy will be, will be smashed. But the main victory has already been, you know, we've all, we've already won the main the main victory, the main battle. But there'll be a final battle. But the main thing has already happened. That's that, that's why his birth is unique, and that's the meaning of this of this event. And now, when we understand, you know, the the global picture, the big picture of it. So, different. so if we compare with our own suffering and our disappointments, kind of it loses its value. That I didn't go on my trip kind of becomes hilari hilarious. We need to put God in the first place in our lives. He's the king. Well, what, what is this coronavirus and financial problems? Yes, of course, it's a bit uncomfortable to us. But if I look through the eyes of God, God said, like, I will come, and I will rule, and I will lead the people. 
как God has a plan. And of course, for a small for a small person, it's a bit hard to understand all of it. But God invites us to, to take part in these fights, to, jo to join his army. to fight alongside Jesus against darkness. Jesus told us, go and teach other people. Tell them what I told you. So, God calls us, you know, to take part, you know, in, to spread the word. So many things do are, are important, but not things like our comfort, our trips, our achievements in life. But the main thing is that God, His Word, and people's souls. And that these are the things that we need to invest in during our lives. Before Jesus comes again, God, His Word, and our souls. And if we can, if can unite all three, bring God's word into someone's life, that we turn darkness into light. And that's the main thing, that, 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 that's what's important. The biggest joy I've experienced, I experienced when I was taking part in some kind of godly works, when I saw that person turn from darkness into light, when I saw them doing it. I saw their transformation. That I heal someone's life or something is healed in their lives. That you can see kind of you in the center of, of God's work. That you are the tool of His work. When I consulted people, when we talked about, wor uh, about God, people turned from the disappointment and pain back to God. And they, they they're filled with joy and that that's the biggest joy our comfort is this second place all our all our problems and suffering should be down the list way down the list to think about God and his plans and God calls all of us to put him at the center on the first place where he belongs in our hearts, in our in our minds, and I want to finish with a with a quote I found it yesterday. It's very um, famous Christian writer. And his friend was talking to this guy a couple of hours before he died. The last words in his life. Life is dark. Let's not lose faith. There's someone else who rules. But not only in Washington or in Moscow, but someone above. Let's go. That's why I'm not afraid. Be sure that even in the darkest moment, don't let your hope die and drown. There is hope for everybody. But it's not going to let us just disappear and die.